In the first instalment of this VW Special, I took you through the work I did on my old camper van before visiting VW Specialist Luke Theocari to see his stable of rare bugs. In the second instalment, we'll take a closer look, plus listen to his stories, and Luke is also the proud owner of the original Herbie from the movie The Love Bug. And of course, we've got to take one final ride in my old camper. I can't thank you enough for all your support and watching over the last year. And how important it is to like and subscribe if you haven't already to help sustain this channel and make sure you never miss an episode. So back to where we left off, checking out how the camper van has fared over the last few years and what Luke finally made in my efforts. Well, I did all that and you checked them and you went spot on, 10, spot on, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then you probably took it away and rebuilt it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but this is the sort of vehicle that we buy to restore and sell. It's beautiful as it is, but it just needs a little bit of help. Yeah. I love the orange colour as well. It's very 70s, isn't it? What I can't get my head around is that white steering wheel. I love it. Oh. Get a load of that. It's very California, that. Well, you haven't changed it, so it must have grown on you. <laughs> it's nothing to change. I, I love a nice standard yeah. van. It's lovely. That's how they should be. I mean, look at the front of that. It's like... <laughs> and I love the big screens as well. Loads of light coming yeah. in. Almost like a panoramic view when you're yeah. sitting high up driving on a motorway. You go back in and get a cup of tea. Greek Shall tea? We? Yeah. Should we have a quick look inside first? Yeah, you can see these are non-original, these uh, rubber seals. They're all right, but you should they don't have the harder, haven't you? Yeah, they don't have the right profile. Yeah. Give it a good slam. Welcome to your holiday. So that folds into a bed, doesn't it? A double bed. Mm -hmm. Would yeah. you fit in that? I would. Um, I would diagonally, I think, with my knees up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get many to the gallon out of these. Well, it's the same engine that runs these as in the Beetle. The yeah. same 1600 engine. Yeah but there's more weight to push around. They're a nice engine. But the thing is, when you go away one of these, you, you bring your family with you, but also half the kitchen. Yeah, and the canoes on clothing. the top. <laughs> so you're carrying a lot of weight. Yeah. So it, it makes makes it hard work for the engine. Yeah, so you just go where you are. You, you don't put as canoes as on. on the top. Nothing, get the seats out. You just it. about hit 50 mile an hour on That's the motorway. Just a spare pair of socks. <laughs> Yeah, so what's this one? This is a Super Beetle. Yes, yeah, a 1303. Super Beetle refers to the front suspension type. It's got my first and struts on the front. Is that the only difference? Oh, no, there's uh, it's IRS on the back, independent rear suspension. It's got a different spare uh, wheel area. Seats are the same, different windscreen, curved. Yeah, this, this is the shape I like. The chunky lights at the back. See, l -Reg was the first year of this model. And I remember the 1972 um, motor show at Olympia, and there was a gold first, you know, three turning round on a yeah. turntable. You remember that? I yeah. remember that car. But roll the clock on how many years we used to look after that particular car. It was bought by a customer of ours, Mrs. Chick and her husband. Yeah. And I, I was looking after it for her. Her husband passed away, and I looked after it for her. Wow. So you've got to tell me about this Herbie one. So this is Herbie. This is called H2 Herbie. They all had a number. This is um, in the first Disney film, The Love Bug, in 1969. Yeah. They used, I think it was nine prop cars to do the film. Each car had a different role to play in the film. This car is the only Porsche-powered car that they built. So is this the original one or a copy of that car? No, it's the original car. Wow. And how many got smashed up during filming? Um, I think a, a couple were thrown away after filming, but this one after film was sold to the Brooker Car Museum in California. Yeah. 
and from there it got sold to a private owner, Greg Carr in Florida, and from him to me. But you notice that there's no VW ID on this car. There's no logos anywhere. No advertising. VW of America didn't sponsor the film, so Disney didn't well, leave any trace. I mean, it doesn't matter, does it? It's a Beetle. Everyone but, knows what a Beetle looks like. Yeah. But in 69, it was the biggest grossing film. What engine's in this? He's got a, a Super 70, Super 75 Porsche engine. Yeah. Uh, with a Sebring exhaust. Stock engine. So he's strong. Come on, let's get a cup of tea. Um, see a little calming gear in the corner as well? Oh, yes. What do you see next to the calming gear? Can I take a look? Yes. You like undressing it, aren't you? Yeah. This has gone original 600 miles. 686 miles from you. It's a 1979 American spec. Carmen convertible. Wow. That's all original, yeah. That's been changed actually, oh, but, is it? Yeah. but to original spec. Yeah. Even though it's done no miles, it still deteriorates. Oh, look at that interior. That is incredible. Brand new, 685 miles. Want a, a Greek tea or English tea? Um, surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> I then popped through to see his son, Lou. Hi, Lou. Hi. You're right. Sorry to disturb you. Sorry. How you doing? Yeah, not too bad. So, what's this you're working on? So, this is our '65 Street Legal Drag Beetle. It's just basically a turbo monster. Have you painted this? Yeah, we painted it about three months ago. Oh, you've done a fabulous job. So well, that's the hardest colour really, isn't it? Yeah, no, the hardest bit's get it flat and has to be mirror clever. finish. I love the wheels, I love the size of the wheels. <laughs> wow. And the big chunky, so it's got a um, narrowed back end. Oh, well, so you've got the bigger fat wheels, so you can get more of a I see, straight yeah, line. So it doesn't catch the arch. Yeah. And is the front the same? Uh, yeah, front's got a narrow beam, and the, the whole car's been body dropped. Yeah. So if you have a look inside, on top of the tunnel, you've got the selector rods on top, handbrake oh, yeah. cables, everything's come Above. up a level. That's normally underneath the car, isn't it? Yeah, it's in normally truck. in that tunnel that runs yeah. front to back. So this is like used on the track, is it? Yeah, uh, drag racing, so it's straight line. Does about, about 12, 12 seconds, quarter of a mile. And what engine's in this? It's got a 2.3 litre turbocharged Beetle engine. So can you show us it? Yeah, I can take the cover off and give you, give you a little look. Give you a couple of minutes. All right. Is this open at the back? Not fully. Where the engine's set up, you've got the alternator right in the middle. <laughs> wow, look at that for a lump. Tent mounted alternator, so we had to put that in. <laughs> There's a uh, four barrel 600 carburetor. Go on, then fire it up, scare us all to yeah. death. I get it, I get it. <laughs> That's phenomenal. It sounds like a 6.3, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it's, it's got no silencer, it's just a straight pipe out the turbo. Oh, right. So it just comes down behind the back wheel. There's nowhere else to put one. Man, <laughs> everything's for sale, by the way. Wow. Well, thanks for showing us that, Lou. Right. Appreciate it. And now I'm excited to take a ride in my old van. Hello, old friend. Listen to that. Oh yeah, 
I remember this. They're just so simplistic. I think the biggest thing for me in this was cliff power steering. Um, and it just transforms the van. The fine once you're moving, but as soon as you have to park or you're going from standing or you're turning left from a standing still or right, you're literally like, you know, you really have to get used to the amount of power you have to put in. It just, just, whoa, there you go. Very characteristic of these. Yeah, it's, um, it's an amazing upgrade. The brakes aren't too clever on these, but it's just part and part of the, the character of the vehicle. And once you get used to it, it takes you five minutes to get used to it. You know how to drive them and you don't have a problem after that. But um, steering's lovely and light. Lovely sound of that 1600 quiet, zippy engine. They're just a, they're just a lovely thing. Um, I mean, if you look around you inside the cabin, I know like families used to go on holiday for two weeks at a time, three weeks at a time to Devon or Cornwall or, you know, Wales, whatever. But, um, you know, they're not really the most comfortable thing to sleep in. Yeah, the gear change on these is pretty Neanderthal, but you've got a nice smooth gear change once you get used to it. And this steering wheel is just great. I mean, I think it's just designed for that. The brakes always feel a bit iffy to begin with because, of course, you've got drums all round on these. You can upgrade them to discs, which improve it no end. But uh, just listen to that. Listen, just zipping up the gears. Lovely and smooth and floaty. And... Yeah, it's just them brakes. Do you trust them? Especially in the built-up area in London on these crazy roads with all these delivery guys. lovely it's nice really comfortable car and you've got like this panoramic view I actually like the old split-screen ones as well but the kind of um I wouldn't say they're not as practical as these but they look nicer but these are a little bit more roomier and you've got better visibility God, the steering is lovely so unfortunately it's not really the setting we want or the roads we want to drive in in one of these, you know, in smoggy Uxbridge with all the sirens and delivery bikes, but I'm afraid this is it. But even so, you can see the way it's holding up with modern traffic. It's a lovely, comfortable drive. Everything's basic on these, just hand window winders. You know what? It's simple. It's beautiful in simplicity. And there we go, back at the shop. So my quick fix complete and my final drive done. And now it's back into the shop for that long awaited cup of tea and to listen to some of Luke's incredible stories of days gone by. I mean, we were talking about Paul Newman before, you know, obviously Omar for other reasons for outrunning yeah. the police, but you know, there's people like Hugh McGregor, he was saying, uh, Martin Clunes, he's big into his VWs, isn't he? Yeah, apparently so, yeah. I think he owns a, a nice black Type 2. Yeah. Um, Ewan McGregor, he's got several, I believe. I heard he's got a hangar in the States where he keeps them all. Wow. But I don't exactly know what he's got. I've never met him. No, an actor with taste, come on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Rarity. <laughs> and what about, um, Je isn't Jansen Button? He's, he's into his Yeah, he, he sold him a, a, a panel van many, many years ago, about 2009, I think it was. 
Uh, he used it to take his bikes to the um, to the events. Yeah, was there a black one? Yeah. No, it was a Coca-Cola van that he rebranded. Yeah, I think I've seen that one. You know, in auction. Make a in wish. One of the big auctions. Yeah, make a wish graphics on it now. Yeah, and it's sold for a lot of money. That. Good amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but very high spec. Yeah. Two point five liter. And that came from you. I sold him the van, yeah, funny story, he, I put an advert out for the 56 panel van and three fellas turned, well, someone emailed me and they turned up on the Saturday to have a look at it and I looked at one of them and I thought, I know him from somewhere, I've seen him before somewhere and I couldn't figure out where and he goes, I've got that sort of face, people always say that to me. Oh, and so I carried on showing them the van and uh, they went away to think about it and a few days later, one of them phoned up and he goes, we'd like to buy the van, can I come and put a deposit on it? So he came, put a deposit on the van and we were chatting and asked him what he did for a living. And he says, I'm a test driver. And he said, and that's my mate that you recognised um, the other day, that's him on the snap-on calendar. So I looked around and it was Jensen Button. <laughs> Honestly, I thought it was such a fool, but it was just, it, the, they were laughing about it. Well, look, Luke, you're one of the top specialists, so I always say you're one of the top specialists, so oh, you know well, you are. I wouldn't say that, but... So you uh, must have had a few people walk through the door. I mean, yeah, you were telling me Suggs came in once and bought a, a van off yeah, your car gear, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, he came and bought a, a car gear to celebrate his 25th wedding anniversary. Very low mile, it was 9,000 mile car gear. Wow. Saturn yellow, what, beautiful completely car. original, yeah? Totally original, original paint, interior, in everything. yellow? Saturn yellow, very bright yellow. Wow. I think he's still got it. I bet it's not done many miles since as well. I don't think he's used it at all. Yeah. Um, but hey, the, everyone loves a VW. Yeah. And didn't you tell me a story about Jamie Oliver? Didn't his gearbox go on his van? <laughs> yeah. Tell yeah. me that story. Yeah, we prepared his um, 23 window Samba for his Italian tour. And towards the end, it, it, he broke his gearbox. So my ex-business partner and myself, we, we had to fly out there with a gearbox. You took it on the plane? On the plane, yeah. So what, you just in, stuck, stuck in it locker, in a bag and, and in carried it through? <laughs> yeah. And you had no problems getting it through? No, no, in one bag we had the gearbox, in the other bag we had an aluminium trolley jack. We had several hand tools, an angle grinder. But you had a gearbox onto a plane? It weighed 29 kilograms, I think we are allowed 30. <laughs> and we just about got it on there, we had gaffer tape. You hammer. couldn't do that now? No. Not with all the security? No. No one stopped us at the airport. We just went through and uh, we got his um, the gearbox replaced, got it working again. He took us out for a nice meal that evening. Yeah, where did you go? Nice restaurant. It's like a tapas bar, but they did pizzas there. So we sat on a long table and his all his crew were there. The company, the food was beautiful. We enjoyed it. We had a lovely evening. So we. We ate our pizzas, our tappers. Next day, he was cooking for the baker's wife. Good. And uh, there was a baker that he particularly went to visit and um, it was his wife's birthday. So he was there um, on camera and we they asked us to go in and see what they're up to. So oh, we went there nice. as well. So we're around the back sort of preparing the food. Yeah. Cutting vegetables up and stuff. It was wow. good fun. A nice story, nice memory. Yeah, some great stories. As I say, but there's a few people being through here that of note, you know, celebrities or... Well, celebrities, but also regular people. Everyone's important that walks through the door, all I customers, know, but it's nice when uh, a celebrity pops in because normally they come because they've been recommended. Yeah. Which is a nice way of uh, attracting trade. You know, everyone gets treated the same, we have a laugh, a joke with all of them, and uh, we just get on, enjoy our and work. And you've all got something in common, they're all VW They all enjoy their VWs, exactly. Anyway, I've had a, a lovely afternoon anyway, Luke. And Enjoyed thank yourself. You, yeah. Thank you so much for showing me your place. It's not mine. Oh, oh, don't. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you again. See you later. Be good. Missing you already. <laughs> thank you for watching this episode of Classic Obsession. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And see you all next time.